This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, hello everybody! Happy Sunday to you all. Normally I do this stream on Saturday, however, last Saturday was a little busy for me, so I delayed it to Sunday. And we're continuing with the Fruit of Grisea today. So, last time we actually got started getting some action sequences, which was pretty cool. I'm hoping we get more of those, because that's kind of what, one of the things that interested me in the game in the first place, was the action scenes. I was heard that there was a lot of them, and I heard that they were pretty well written. And indeed, they seem to be very well written action scenes. Can we please continue that and get fewer scenes of people stripping down in front of us? Unfortunately, we, uh, we're, we might be more likely to get the latter. Anyhow... Here we have Michiru in the hallway. What are you up to? Whoosh. <laughs> Is she psyching herself up to act friendly towards people? I get that. I watch from behind as Michiru boldly leaps into the classroom like a paratrooper jumping into the sky over Normandy. Wow. Naturally, she's not as heavily equipped, but in her grim resolve, she's a match for any screaming eagle. Without such intestinal fortitude, there's no way the girl could charge so defenselessly into that classroom. Well, unless she's simply unaware of the situation. <coughs> oh, I forgot that they were screaming. Hey Nick, what's up? I'm hoping we get more action, because that's way more interesting. Seems like the latter. You are a truly foolish woman, Michiru. <laughs> and here I was, filled with admiration for your kamikaze spirit, to think you were just wallowing in ignorance. <laughs> you didn't know anyone was in the classroom? Hmm, okay. Because you didn't ask. <laughs> Oh, is there a... what? That's right. The situation. A bee. A flying pest has occupied our classroom and now lies in ambush. Her classmates have all withdrawn from the field. Oh, there's just one bee? That's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. One bee is probably not dangerous unless you're really allergic to them. This is exactly why you're renowned as the most brainless of bimbos. Wow, that's so rude. Every action should be taken only after consideration of the worst-case scenario. Don't you have any common sense at all? If that's the case, no one would ever do anything. What kind of an idiot opens the door without assessing the risks? Yeah, Yuji, you're, you're, in the, you're the weird one for that one. Whenever you open a door, do so in steadfast resolve to find Somalia waiting on the other side. Yeah, good question. You're not worthy of my instruction. Wow, just stop being so rude to this poor girl. <laughs> I think you can just open them normally, Michiru. You're you're doing fine. Hmm. If you're that determined, I suppose I can make an exception. Step one: confirm the surrounding area. Standing in front of the door, I demonstrate by pointing sequentially to the ceiling, the floor, my front, my rear, my left, and my right, following with my eyes. I mean, keep being aware of your surroundings is always nice. Observe with the utmost caution, you understand? Search every inch of your surroundings on the assumption that they hide deadly traps. Quiet! We've just begun our six hour stakeout period, of course! <laughs> yeah, stop being such a troll. What? By all rights, we should obtain a map, infiltrate, and watch from cover for a week in advance. I'm grading extraordinary permission after a raid after nothing more than an observation period, and you're still not satisfied? Just how far do you expect me to indulge your laziness, you spoiled bottle blonde? And you call yourself Japanese? <laughs> this is... Uh, you, you aren't in the army anymore, Yuji. Hmm. Very well. I'll teach you the simplest possible method using nice small words. First, we slowly open the door. Then we throw in the decoy. <laughs> wow! Next, we close the door and stand by until the decoys report. <sighs> 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 
We're being too mean to this girl. Listen up, maggot! You have a scouting mission to complete! Desertion in the face of the enemy is treason! If you turn your back on our foe and come crawling to safety, I'll re-educate you with my own hands! <laughs> Calm down and maintain your composure. Don't let panic blind you! Use those holes in your head that you call eyes! <laughs> Why are all dating sim protagonists unlikable? You're truly hopeless. Very well, I'll go as far as to seeing a song to give you courage. La la la, gleaming like the morning sun, Walther, Pacht, and Dressig. Uh-oh. If she was deadly allergic to bees, then we just killed her. I see! She's decided to silence her breathing and hide! Compared to noisily trying to escape, that's a much wiser course of action. She's gained such instinctive understanding of the art of reconnaissance in this short time. Meet you, my friend! We might make a scout out of you yet, hmm? Mitru is collapsed on the floor, her eyes rolling around in her head. What's all this, then? Hey, Maggot, who authorized you to faint? <laughs> Calm yourself. This faint is nothing more than an insect. Ha! Be eliminated! St situation resolved. <laughs> I told you to calm yourself. This kind of bee can't stain. At least it's not one of those Japanese hornets that, like, can spew acid. Listen well. A bee's stinger is a part of its oviposture. Therefore, males don't have one. Look closely. This fiend is harmless. <laughs> they jumped to conclusions and mistook this for the dangerous variety. Run off to get insecticide or something. Oh, brother. Watch that one be one of those stainers. That's a giant hornet. It stains. Also, it's poisonous. Well, as long as you don't eat it, the poison won't hurt you. Shh! It'll stain you if you shout. Keep quiet. <laughs> Listen carefully, Michiru. Giant hornets don't just stain. They inject potent venom. Slight digression, but this is fiend is called the Yak Killer because of its poison cocktail. Oh, if it if it shoots poison, then it's venomous, not poisonous. <sighs> Yuji is such a troll. Don't make any sudden movements. Walk slowly to keep quiet. Fortunately, you're a blonde, so your coloration is similar to that of a hornet. In other words, there's no problem if he accepts you as his friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, offering it a bohemian folk psalm. Very sensible. Hmm, when they clack their mandibles together like that, it signifies a final warning. If you make any more stupid moves, you'll be stunned for sure. <laughs> oh wow, they made their own insecticide. Of course Sachi made her own insecticide. Sachi drags a tank with an atomizing nozzle and hose into the room. It looks like it's designed for spraying agricultural chemicals. Apparently, it's full of her own cocktail. <laughs> Dispensing deadly neurotoxin. <laughs> Why, what the heck is this skit? Neurotoxin. Sounds like it'll take that hornet out for sure. <laughs> Don't worry. Nope. <laughs> Sachi, we're not all Guybrush Shreepwood. Get this poor girl out of here. <laughs> and we'd have to vacate the classroom. Like, <laughs> it's basically like the equivalent of, like, someone unleashed toxic gas. That we need to call in, like, the biohazard team to get rid of it. <laughs> We've got to come up with a plan B or this won't end well. That hornet is pretty worked up.
Just what did you do to that poor hornet? <laughs> yes, it's that. Stop being a tsundere. <laughs> and Michiru is absolutely the person who would accidentally inhale it. Seems to be aiming at your legs. Michiru, do you think you'll be needing those in the future? I see. <laughs> oh, hi, Yumiko. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be deadly. <laughs> Stepped on it. <laughs> Yumiko having the practical uh, <laughs> solution. And this is why you wear shoes to school. The squashed hornet's stuck flat to the bottom of her shoes. Sakaki walks off to her desk and takes out a book. Although the girl glances over here briefly, she soon pulls out her bookmark without another word and begins moving her eyes across the lines of text. Sachi, there's got to be a nest somewhere nearby. Think you can find it to give it a dose of that cocktail of yours? Yes, Thanks, Sachi, you're the best. Not the type you want to make an enemy of. Well, it's as sure as a shame that we scared her, scared her out of her wits last stream. With this, the Hornet incident draws to a close without any casualties. Just as they say, at times, ignorance is bliss. I do really like all of these little skits that we get. I bet I bet you, like, the plot will get kicked off later in the game, but I kind of like how we're just kind of getting introduced to the characters through various skits. It's, it's cool. After middle school, you won't be popular with the girls if all you can do is fight. You need brains, too. Or so my master taught me. I remember him saying that. So, are you smart then? In response to the obvious question, my master replied that women are more popular if they're a little dim-witted. I think she might have intended it as a joke. Not that it was remotely funny. My master wasn't much of a comedian, but there's one thing I have to thank her for. Specifically, she's the one who really got me hooked on reading. <laughs> Gentleman Pro, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome to the Grisea stream. <laughs> there are a vast number of books in this world, and the majority are interesting in some way. Even if you get stuck with a seriously dull one, if you look at it critically and figure out why it's a failure, the time you spend with it isn't a complete waste. I devoured books like an addict when I was a kid. And my master would get me anything I wanted to read, even comics or porn magazines. Um, maybe don't get them the latter. It's a damn good thing you can enjoy if you can enjoy reading. Why? Lets you make use of the time you spend waiting in the dentist's office, doesn't it? Am I supposed to laugh now? Not to say that I've gained much wisdom from what I've read in waiting rooms, but I think I can at least smile at those words today. Hey! Dentist office clear uh, usually have highlights magazines, and Goofus and Gallant are a compelling read. Makina, you here? Hi. Hi, are we visiting Makina's room for some reason? Hey, Makina, uh, why aren't you in your own room? Oh, she's not in her room. Whose room is this? Also, there are all these toys on the shelf. I thought if anyone's room, if this would be anyone's room, it would be Makina's. True. Yes, there was a note on her door. Thing is, the paper was yellowed and wrinkled. There's no telling how long it's been up there. Are you always in Amine's room? Oh no, this is Amine's room. Does she just not use her room? If so, Amine can change in there. <laughs> yes, the room I've just entered is, in fact, Amine's. Looking around, a good half of the room is buried in random junk. I guess Makina has been doing her best imitation of a squirrel preparing for hibernation, depositing things here little by little with every visit. Alright, alright. I appreciate the neighborly spirit, but this isn't your room. 
Don't tell her it's me. Do not tell her it's me. Just tell her it's the UPS guy. Actually... Makana, you traitor! <laughs> no! <laughs> Why are you in your underwear again? Nothing much. Just stopped by to lend Makana a book. You wanna, like... I was gonna say, do you wanna just get changed? But pro probably, she, probably she actually doesn't. It's for that thing. I point towards it, one item in my Machina's pile of junk, an aquarium containing her crawfish. Oh yeah, she did catch the crawfish. She asked me if I knew any books with detailed instructions on raising crawfish, so I took a look around the store by the station. Yes, please put on clothes. This is very weird. Sorry about that. I love how Yuji's not even acknowledging it, though. He probably doesn't even notice. Apparent. Okay, the fact that Makina is not reacting weirdly seems to imply that Amine is just frequently in her underwear, which is very strange. Here, this is it. The part about raising crawfish starts on page 38. The last two pages talk about getting them to turn blue. No problem. As soon as Makina accepts the book for me, she sits down on the spot with a thump and starts to rifle through the pages. When I tried this experiment as a kid, there was a range of variation among the individuals, but most of them did turn some shade of blue. By the way, Amine, I have a question of my own. Do you mind? Why exactly are you constantly half-naked? Yes! <laughs> I know that I shower with my underwear on, too. I see. I knew you wanted me to notice. I'll try to work on that. But, I mean, you'd think you'd do the ah! thing and hide your chest before I got a chance to bring it up. Usually. Amine, no more concerned with my glance than before, walks briskly to her vanity and flips on a hairdryer. That still doesn't explain why he didn't put clothes on A. When Makina is over And B. When somebody else arrives I feel like even Okay, being like in your If you're a woman in your, in your underwear around a guy That's really weird Even if you're just around other girls That's also still really weird Cannot relate uh, big o bobs are tough in their own way, I see. I would love a glass of water. Hmm? Yeah, if you're offering. Makana places her book on the floor, opens Amine's refrigerator, then promptly sticks her head in and starts rooting around like she owns the place. It's basically as much her room as Amine's by this point. No, Amine! Just how long has Makina been hanging around in this room? Does she have, like, horrid nightmares or something? This is literally just... Proving my point that she's effectively eight years old. <laughs> yep. Interesting question. They say it's a rare thing to find a woman other than your mother who will nag you. Take good care of her, all right? <laughs> Um, you're, you're talking about, like, water or, like, Sprite and not vodka, right? <laughs> Why I have a room if you sleep there only once? I, I don't know. She's probably, like, emotionally attached to Amine. As she speaks, Makina hands me a can of orange juice. Oh, okay, not, not vodka. <laughs> Look, Makina, can we do something about this Onichan thing? Well, how can I put this? It feels a little awkward. 
私もマキナって呼ばれるの慣れたし。マキナ is a boss name though. Hmm? What do you mean? You don't like being called by your own name? Oh, really? Makina is like one of the coolest girl names I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> it's like Makana, like mechanical. It's it's cool. Oh, and why is that? Mm, no, not really. Maybe in Japanese, but not in English. What? Oh, if that if that's how it's pronounced in Japanese, then all right, fair enough. I see. Uh, that's certainly a very feminine name. No. Yeah, whatever you say. Hey, Amine. Oh, f thank you for putting on actual clothes. Is this girl high? Just what are you putting in her food? <laughs> I'm beginning to think that the orange juice isn't actually orange juice. So she says, but this is like talking to one of those guys who self-medicate the night before a major operation. I feel like I'm dealing with someone who sees things they shouldn't see and hears voices that they shouldn't hear. Instinctively, I drop my hand onto Makina's head and vigorously ruffle her hair around. <laughs> Nookie time! Hmm? Your pupils don't look dilated. What? I'm waiting for the moment Amine either, like, poisons our food, or puts sleeping pills in our food, or drugs our food in some way so she can have her way with us. I'm predicting that'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a funny face of Magnus. <laughs> oh, now I have to change my what I posted on Twitter. <laughs> the hell? Uh, hey! Oh, we embarrassed Amine, Amine plenty last stream. It's fine. Makina seizes my hand and tries to forcibly drag me further inside. Well, alright, fine. There probably won't be anything I dislike in an Odin stew anyway. I'll eat pretty much anything that's put in front of me, but I do have some foods that I find a little difficult to deal with on a psychological level. Yeah, like anything made by a woman that we don't trust. Yeah. Offered a cushion with a cute girly design, I sit down for a bit reluctantly. In an instant, Makina's plopped herself down on top of my knees. Look, you. I'm not even going to make this the thumbnail, because this is just a little lewd. Why are you sitting on my lap? It's a little weird. That's not what I'm saying, but... the line, That line's familiar. I hadn't realized until now, but Makina seems to have a habit of imitating Amine's speech. Now that I think about it, that you know she's always tagging on the end of her sentences, for no particular reason, seems like it might be a corruption of Amine's frequent you know. And Makina's forcible tone and attitude towards men also remind me of a certain someone. They do say pets start to resemble their owners. Someday this girl might well become the sort of evil woman who walks around with her obobs, hanging halfway out, seducing struggling shopkeepers into giving away their livelihood. Don't do that, Makina! We can't have that. To tell the truth, from my current position, Makina's modest breasts are clearly visible. For those of a certain taste, these fiends might have a power to tempt exceeding that of Amine's oversized udders. Yeah, but we don't talk about that. Huh? Hey, Amine! Huh? Why does this girl jump onto men's laps without a second thought? I'm leaning towards blaming you. Huh? <laughs> I'm not saying I hate it, but if she starts casually hopping on top of strange old men in town, I think we might run into some problems. I don't know if she's just attaching to us now. Well, we've had a couple chances to talk recently, I guess. 
I caught her a crawfish. Nothing particularly comes to mind. That a fact? So, why has Makina gotten so attached to me? I don't remember taming her with food or teaching her dirty games behind Mommy's back. I searched my memory, but nothing really stands out. Completely disinterested in my ruminations, Makina pushes her can of orange juice towards me and tilts her head to the side as she asks for help. A pretty standard pattern among women playing the moe type, who try to tackle the male heart with an appeal to their own helplessness. But Makina's fingers are stubby and thin. I wouldn't be surprised if opening a can really was a challenge. Yeah, here you go. And if you tried to pull something like that, I'd probably punch you, right? So she doesn't let just anybody pamper her like this. I see. Whether or not Makina is paying any attention to our conversation about her, she continues to flip through the book on my lap without comment. Yeah, that that is some that is a little bit of a problem. I can I ever agree or disagree with this. Ouch. Am I the only one seeing the irony in uh, Amine telling her to get more dressed? Amine reaches her hands under Makina's armpits and forcibly drags her up off of my knees. A sense of emptiness. Might be going a bit too far, but the sudden removal of that limp, warm creature from my lap leaves me feeling slightly lonely. They're literally treating her like a pet. Hi. Or, uh, honestly, though, I, I seriously feel like Makina's just like the little sister who's tagging along. Even though she's supposed to be older than that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't try talking like a baby. Banzai! Uh, hey, how about having her put her clothes on by herself? Yeah, that we should get to a point of that. I believe this is the classic case of the pot calling the kettle black. Gowns? Ah, right. I mean, I hate, I hate, like, the kind of jeans that are just, like, really tight, and, like, yeah, I get that. I, I like looser clothes, baggy pants, that kind of thing. TMI. Or just get comfier bras. You're eight. Yeah, they're shockingly big. What did you eat to get a pair like that? <laughs> that's all you need, bread and strawberries. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, so that's why you need the strawberries. So, Makina likes bread and strawberries best, huh? Kind of childish tastes, but I guess that fits with her personality. Like the crusty bigots? Hard bread? What's with that? 
Yeah! I get that. Bread with like a good tough crust is very good. Is, is Japanese bread like really soft, even the crust? That there's definitely a, a place for that. I I kind of like the crispy crust though. <laughs> I like this facial expression of Agatha's. Okay, we need to get Makina, like, a pizza stone then, so she can bake bread on it. Hmm. I see. <laughs> Small portion sizes. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, we're gonna have a problem. You don't have it easy, do you, Amine? Okay, but we, we... If she really is 15, then we need to... We need to help her start to mature, like, now. Hmm... I've never seen Family Guy, Nick. It's never really held an appeal for me. I'm the sort who'd tend to suspect the girl's purposefully acting younger than her age to take advantage of her childish looks. But in this case, I don't think I can disagree. That really just is how she is. I don't think she is. Well, I suppose if we use you as a standard, the gap isn't quite that dramatic, but... <laughs> Demonstration? I'm not a sad man. I definitely am a strange man, though. I don't know. As if you couldn't tell, I'm not a huge fan of the dirty humor, and I've definitely heard Family Guy has a lot of dirty humor. I can see the appeal it has for some people, it's just, it's not something that appeals to me. Amine takes the book from Akana and promptly hands it over to me. Do you just have... Is she a savant? Does she have, like, photographic memory, maybe? She's literally reciting word for word what the book says. Okay, yeah, she's definitely some kind of savant. That's probably her, her shtick. It's a general book about animals aimed at children. There's a lot of other stuff in there as well. I opened the book Amine handed to me to page 161. Spread across both pages is a color illustration of a plesiosaur, with words in a bold white typeface printed all around it. She was indeed, without even a single misplaced word. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, she's got to have photographic memory. Like, she reads a page and she just remembers it all with perfect mem perfect retention. I feel like that would be a blessing and a curse. Dogs are more obedient than cats. Okay, yeah, this girl is smart. She just pretends to be stupid. Hmm, she's correct. Alright. 
どうよすごくないこの短時間でパラパラと流し読みしただけであの本の内容まるまる一冊全部覚えちゃったんだよ。Yeah, we just need to work on her social skills, personality, and maturity level. Yeah, that's pretty amazing to be sure. あ,あれあんまり驚いてないね。Makina, I've got a question. Do you remember the photograph of a bird on page 144? What color is it? If I say blue, you'd sort of think blue, but if I say red, you'd get the feeling it might be red? Thought so. Seems like Makina memorizes the pages in monochrome, loses the color information. Easier to memorize it quickly that way, right? Weird. I'm not sure if I'm familiar with. Because I wonder if people with photographic memory are kind of the same. I feel like if you have photographic memory, you remember like everything perfectly, even the colors. To tell the truth, my sister had the exact same skill. I first noticed my big sister's speed reading when she was seven years old. Watching her flip through a stack of books from the school library incredibly quickly, I couldn't suppress my curiosity. Can you really read them like that? My sister answered, I'm not reading them, but I am memorizing the contents in a perfectly casual tone of voice. Completely incredulous, I tested my sister on the spot. Exactly like Amine did with Makina just now, I gave her a page number and asked her to read me back the contents. And, of course, she remembered every single word. According to her, it's much faster to memorize the books when they're in black and white. When dealing with books where color information wasn't important, she could even memorize the two pages simultaneously using her left and right eye. I was totally dumbfounded at the time. Yeah, that, that's some Rain Man level skills. Four years later, by the time she was 11, my sister was managing rapid memorization of color books as well. And thanks to the long hours of practice, her left and right eye could actually memorize separate books simultaneously. Hearing that went past the level of surprise. It was outright terrifying. Do people like that even exist? Basically, she's not reading the book. She's recording the pages as an image in the right side of her brain. When you ask her about the contents, she reproduces the image in her right brain and reads it by consciously interpreting the characters with her left brain. That sound about right, Makina? What are the odds that two characters in like this general area in this general time period would have that skill? I don't know the details myself, but it's basically looking at the page as a picture instead of as lines of characters, and saving a mental snapshot. Ignoring the meaning, she processes it rapidly as light information, then draws up the meaning later on if she needs it. To put it more simply, it's sort of like she's downloading a compressed file to her hard drive, then extracting what she needs later, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Even if you can record something in your mind, your memory as a whole can still be a disorganized mess. Apparently, you can work on that by training your synapses. If you repeatedly memorize the same information, it stimulates your synapses and makes it harder to forget. My sister would record the same image eight times over before she turned the page. Other than that, you can also memorize while moving your body in specific ways, which ties the image to your procedural memory and makes it more durable. That's fine. It's not like there's any reason that for you to have to turn into a genius like that. You get a little of everything. Who's they? Where did you hear that? Okay, I guess I'll be... Guess I'll be going back to my room, but as the words start to leave my mouth, Makina firmly grabs hold of my hand. Uh, but, but I was going to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters! Didn't you finish already? Aww. 
She wants to spend time with us. All right, all right. We'll stay for Machina's sake. No, that's really not what I meant. <laughs> Don't look so proud when you say that. Oh, that's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> and then the whole Fruit of Grisea turns into episode 4 of Star Wars. I see. Guess there's no helping it then. I want to be spoiled, so you better spoil me. What an unreasonable demand. If this was Amine, I think I would laugh in her face, call her an idiot, and finish things off with a poke to the forehead. Yeah! But for some reason, when Machina gets all cleany, it's a bit difficult to fight back. It's because she's eight. I can't get myself to be too hard on her. Maybe it's because she looks and acts like a child... Soft on children. Well, that isn't a bad thing by any means, but I'm probably the type who dies first when the terrorists start strapping bombs to their kids. Jeez, what a dark comparison. But now that I think about it, it's not like you're really that much younger than me, are you? Don't give me that puzzled face. Alright, stop, stop, being, stop being bossy. Look, you... Just for the record, today's a one-time deal. Don't think I'll let you clean to me wherever you want, got it? Don't compare me with those. <laughs> Again with this. That actually jump-scared me. <laughs> I'd never really given the matter any thought, but... Could it be that I really am a Sundere? I mean, can we define the term first? Isn't the Sudaria a subspecies of woman that's usually prickly and harsh, but then goes all ugui and sweet for some reason? In that case, I don't get it. When exactly have I ever been that saturine lovey-dovey mode? Hmm. Well, come to think of it, in letting Machina occupy my knee like this, I have to admit my aura of masculinity seems to have faded a bit. But this is merely an expression of my magnanimous spirit towards the young. It's not like I'm giving her lap access because I personally enjoy having her here or anything. So, yuji what? There's a difference between being a sundere and just being a bit of a jerk. Sundere's are like typically people who like act mean and like rude to the person because they want to mask that they have feelings for the person. And Yuji doesn't seem to have feelings for Makina. If, if there's one girl at this point where Yuji seems to have feelings for, it would be Sachi, because he's definitely coming on to her the hardest of all, all of the girls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Basically anything without carotene in it is fine. What's that supposed to mean? What is it already? You're making me ill. If you have something to say, how about you say it? You're the one who told me to make friends with Makina, you know. Did she just fall asleep? Say what? Yep, she fell asleep. I thought she'd been unusually quiet for a few seconds there, but at some point Makina's eyes have fallen shut. Still sitting on my lap, her head is jerking back and forth with her breathing. I'm sure she was awake just a minute ago. She probably needs a better sleep pattern. Come to think of it, there was that time I found her in the Rose Garden, unconscious in the bushes. A frequent occurrence? She's got superpowers! <laughs> well, she's a teenager. Really does remind you of a cat, doesn't she? She also has her own room with her own bed. That's fine, but I'm not going for her route. I don't get it. Why get attached to someone like me? Because you're the only guy around. Hmm? 
Uh, no, can't say it does. More like, what a hopeless kid. I guess, I can't say I ever felt pity for her. Is there a number two reason? I don't dislike, I dislike her voice, that's about it. I'm not sure about that one. Well, I definitely don't hate her. That said, I think I've thought of her as annoying more often than cute. Maybe you've got the wrong idea about me, Amine, but I tend to say what I think, even to kids. When Makina annoys me, I tell her straight out. Hmm, that's... Well... Just don't have any real reason to wake her up at the moment, I guess. Hmm. I don't treat her gingerly out of sympathy. When she does something truly stupid, I don't overlook it. <laughs> I don't look overlook it out of pity. And Makina actually prefers it that way. Is that what she's saying? I'm sweet to her? It's nice to know he has his nice moments. Since when were you such an expert on my character? <laughs> Go back to sleep, Makina. <laughs> oh, that that's the way I look after I wake up too. Blah. How does her mouth go that close to her chin, though? We must have talked really slowly if that was 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, whoever voices Magna is doing a good job of making her seem like she just woke up. <laughs> She's kind of tottering around. Is that a good idea? <laughs> Don't eat it! That's for the crawfish! Uh, you sure about that? She seems to be eating from the can of crawfish food. That's no, that's not fine. You know, it kind of feels like you don't really give a damn. Haha. <laughs> my throat sticks shut halfway through my attempt at a laugh, and I'm set into a coughing fit. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, robots shouldn't laugh. Amine grabs the half-finished can of orange juice Makina left lying on the table and hands it over to me. I gulp down the contents immediately. <coughs> I'm fine. I'm as terrible at laughing as I am at smiling. Also par for the course. Fix? Why is that necessary? In the first place, is a crappy smile really something that you can fix? Why would it be your objective? Oh, you're talking about Makina. You're, you're blatantly talking like a toddler. まず自分の言葉遣いがおかしいってことに本人が気がついていないってのが一番の問題だよね。いや、確かに。Oh no, not Amine, you've sworn way more than Makina has. Yeah, my eardrums. <laughs> Who's playing the drums? Every once in a while, you'll find a person with a bad habit they're not even aware of until someone points it out to them. Watching this scene, I've had my suspicions more or less confirmed. Makina's strange, strange quirks seem to be partially the result of contamination from Amine's less admirable habits. 
But as a humble and discreet gentleman, I'm frankly at a loss as to whether to disrupt the status quo by informing Amine of the log in her eye. <laughs> My deeply ingrained pain-in-the-ass warning system is also kicking in. There's a good chance the messenger is going to get killed in this one, so my lips are remaining sealed for the moment. Are they- is, is Amine literally just beating her up? The human mind is a well-designed piece of machinery. It has ways to cope with the coexistence of such pros and cons, truths and fictions. When your mind finds itself facing a contradiction, your thoughts tend to fly off in a completely unrelated direction. It's a self-defense mechanism, just like that burning need to clean that always pops up the night before a big test. So before I realize it, my attention has been drawn to the pleasant rattling sound of something boiling in the pan. The Odin broth's smooth, flavorful smell tickles my nose. I'm hungry. In the end, it would be another 30 minutes before I ate my dinner for that day.